Wow, that's absolutely insane. SpaceX is planning to build a new type of Starship's launch pad. The first signs of this come from the recent activities on the orbital launch mount in Florida. This promises to be a breakthrough that helps Starship be caught this year. So what will the new launch pad look like? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Possibility, SpaceX is planning to reform entirely Starship's ground support system. Why can I be so sure? While prior to Flight 3, we witnessed the redesign of the orbital tank farm in Starbase. Now, during the time between Flight 3 and Flight 4, it's the turn of Starship's launch pad within LC-39A. Specifically, on March 22, one more leg of the OLM at the Starship launch pad in LC-39A, known as SpaceX's Starbase Orbital Launch Site, OLS, was removed. This raises a series of questions, including whether there will then be further removal, an overall change in plans, or a significant design change in the building. Referring to the surprising activity in Florida's OLM, several hypotheses arise. Firstly, it's about the significant design change. The current six legs may be replaced with three new legs, meaning the launch mount might just need three legs to adapt to the new design of the launch table. This is probably because recent Starship flights have shown the SpaceX team the benefits of tripod design and the shortcomings of the current structure. Thus, researching and redrawing design drawings should be a compulsory requirement. This view is rejected by another because any change in the foundation will lead to the overall redesign, meaning they have to start from scratch. It will take more time not to mention the water deluge system with the current OLM is still good. But if that is possible, Starbase's original launch pad would also be demolished and reconstructed someday. So, in this case, why did SpaceX begin applying its new design on the OLS in Florida? I have no idea. What do you think? What I'm pretty sure of right now is that the next launch complex, which will be changed, is the second launch complex in Texas or Pad B. Coincidentally, it is under assembly. After it has been tested successfully and comes online, the first one will follow. This is very important because it's related to SpaceX's goals this year. We know that Starship's both stages are expected to be recovered, meaning the gigantic vehicle is planned to be either caught by Mechazilla or splashed down. My vote is for the real test for catching Starship and I will explain. While the first launch tower only took about a year to complete, given the experience and rapid pace, why don't we believe that the second launch tower will take half that time? What's more, SpaceX kicked off the build of the second one at the end of last year and so far, it has been nearly half of the year and the work goes so fast. The second, therefore, could go online this year. Besides that, I think that the reconstruction of Pad A will take place in 2025 or later. This allows SpaceX to use one of two operational pads in Starbase for the test of catching, ideally trying the new design in advance. The remaining one is back up in the case the first one fails or gets damaged. Another opinion on removing the leg from the LC-39A's launch pad is to install a deluge system unified with the support leg rather than to have to puzzle together pieces as was done at Starbase or even it is not excluded that a flame trench will be applied there. Some worry that water jackets aren't enough to protect the OLM from damage and the flame torch still wears the surface beneath slightly every launch. Additionally, the deluge plates made of steel tend to erode more easily and quickly. Could they shift to tungsten? Tungsten and steel have significantly different properties, including their resistance to erosion. Tungsten is generally harder and more resistant to erosion than steel. This is because tungsten has a higher melting point, greater hardness, and better resistance to chemical and thermal wear compared to most types of steel. Tungsten's hardness and resistance make it particularly useful in applications where erosion, wear, and high temperatures are concerns, such as in the aerospace industry, in the manufacture of cutting tools, and in electrical applications like filaments for light bulbs. Steel, while strong and versatile, is generally more susceptible to erosion compared to tungsten, especially when exposed to abrasive or corrosive environments. However, the erosion resistance of steel can vary depending on its composition and treatment. In summary, tungsten typically has better erosion resistance compared to steel due to its superior hardness, higher melting point, and resistance to chemical and thermal wear. So why does SpaceX prefer steel for its mega pancake 
SpaceX used steel for the water deluge system primarily because of its cost effectiveness, durability, and availability. The water deluge system is used to suppress acoustic energy and reduce the thermal impact during rocket launches. Steel, particularly stainless steel, is a durable and corrosion-resistant material that can withstand the harsh conditions of rocket launches, including exposure to salt water from nearby bodies of water, such as the Atlantic Ocean where SpaceX's East Coast launch facilities are located. Additionally, Steel is relatively easy to fabricate and install, which may have contributed to its selection for the water deluge system. SpaceX often opts for cost-effective solutions that meet their performance requirements, and steel likely fulfilled those criteria for the water deluge system. The second of several planned Starship launch sites has been built in Florida for more than four years or in late 2019. Ironically, work on that pad began before the company started building the pad that would actually support Starship's first orbital launch attempts. SpaceX began constructing Starship's Texas launch site in earnest in late 2020. There are several reasons for choosing Florida as an additional launch site, such as Pad 39A is the only site currently capable of launching SpaceX's Crew Dragon astronaut spacecraft or Falcon Heavy rocket, which has complicated its plans to use the same pad for Starship. Therefore, SpaceX aimed to certify another launch pad at Space Launch Complex 40 to support astronaut and cargo missions with its second-generation Dragon spacecraft. They are now in the final stage. At the end of February, the company performed a test of its new emergency egress system featuring a type of deployable slide. Florida has a hard coast to work on to prevent sinking and subsidence that is occurring at Starbase Launch Complex. The area around Starbase is characterized by loose and unconsolidated soils, including sandy and silty sediments. These types of soils are prone to settlement and compaction over time, particularly when subjected to heavy loads or changes in groundwater levels. Being situated near the Gulf Coast exposes the site to coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion, and fluctuating water levels. These environmental factors can exacerbate soil instability and contribute to subsidence. Changes in groundwater levels, whether due to natural fluctuations or human activities such as groundwater extraction, can affect soil stability and lead to subsidence. Groundwater pumping, common in areas with high water demand like Texas, can cause land to sink as the soil compacts without adequate support from water. Another point is that intensive construction activities associated with building and expanding the Starbase infrastructure can also impact soil stability. Heavy machinery, excavation, and soil compaction during construction can further exacerbate settlement and subsidence. Last but not least, rising sea levels and increased storm activity associated with climate change pose additional challenges to coastal infrastructure like Starbase. These factors can accelerate coastal erosion and increase the likelihood of soil instability and subsidence. Starbase remains SpaceX's favorite location to build Starship outpost infrastructure, though. It is because it's near the shoreline, mostly inhabited near the equator, closer to California, has an experienced and capable workforce in Texas and Texas state and local legislators offered tax incentives to build a rocket factory and launch site there. To ease the overcrowding here, they had to look for more locations and LC-39A was one of them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time, next time.